Oh, it's Monty, and we're getting ready for week 36, the second week of June, 7th to the 11th. And we're talking honors pre-calculus, only two weeks left to go. Now remember, you've done enough to get the grade that you've already earned in this class. We're preparing ourselves for calculus next year, whether that's AB calculus or BC calculus. We need to review this new way of thinking. Okay, so here we go. Don't forget, we've got our pre-calculus team where we post all the videos so you can watch them here or in the stream channel. Most students are just going to the internet, clever, digital tools, excuse me, digital tools, clever. Then we go to Blackboard and we go to find our class. And remember, the easiest way to see any of the videos that we've done up to this point is right here in our announcement page. Okay? So, all the videos over the last nine weeks are posted right here if you need to go back and review any of them. Okay? All right. Now, I'm assuming most of you have clicked on coursework and we're in Unit 9 because there was only a few videos, right? So a couple weeks ago we had these four videos. Most likely last week, Memorial Week, you did these two videos. And we're getting ready for this idea of a derivative, okay? The idea of average rate of change versus instantaneous rate of change. And this is where we're headed. What do we see when we approach this particular point in time from each direction? Okay, and these problems are easy this week. Seriously, you're just going to go, uh, that can't be calculus. But we need to I, make sure that we're good at doing the calculation at an instantaneous point in time. So, let's get started. I forgot to turn on the whiteboard. Okay, so while this boots up, we've already done all of Unit 5 and we finished that. And we've started this idea of reviewing for calculus, okay? And down on reviewing for calculus, a couple weeks ago we did limits in motion. Last week's we did more limits in motion. I'm going to do one more here, and then we're going to go to this limit and continuity, and then next week we'll finish with derivatives. Okay? All right. Clear the canvas. Okay, so let's go to limits, and let's just try question four. We haven't done that. Okay, so last time we were together we studied how to calculate the area under a curve okay and the area under a curve all of this meant something this area has meaning okay and the particular problem that we did this area represented distance travel, okay, based on the units that we were looking at, okay? And all we did was approximate. What was the approximate distance? Okay, so again, these problems are the same idea, and we'll just click on question help, and what they did on this particular problem was fill in from the left side. They connected the corner point, corner point, corner point, corner point, corner point, corner point, corner point. And they just calculated them. They just added up all those areas, okay? And this is called left justified. So on the left over, left over. If you remember last week, I did an average and I was off a little bit because I didn't use the corner point, all right? And tick marks, half. And then they approximated by adding them up, adding them up adding them up until they have a grand total. Okay, So go ahead and do these. Take your time. There's no hurry on any of these problems. They just have different shapes and curves that they're calculating that average of. Okay? All right. And good. So 
they're just going to continue that process and calculate uh, area based on the approximation. All right, let's move forward to limits and continuity. What does that mean, limits and continuity? Okay, so what is the limit of this function as we approach negative 1? Okay, and let's just write this out. All right, so the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x, x minus 2 squared. Now, the one thing I think we should think about doing is actually looking at this. What does that shape look like? So, variable x, parenthesis, variable x, minus 2, close, caret key, squared, graph. Okay? And we have it on the wrong... Actually, that's kind of interesting. As it approaches negative 1, I'm going to go zoom 6. Zoom 6 is like home button. Okay? And we saw this thing coming up and over. I'm interested in this negative 1. So let's check our window. Uh, X min. Let's go 5. And we don't need this at all, so let's do one. And it looked like it was real low. So I'm going to change this to a minus 20. Let's see what this looks like. Y max. We really don't need that Y max that high. Let's see what this graph looks like. Oh, yeah. Right there at negative one, it's approaching something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. Okay, so let's sketch this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight, maybe, somewhere in here. Now, as we approach x equals negative one, what is happening here? Okay? Well, all we're gonna do when we do this is plug it in. Okay? So negative one, negative one minus two squared. Negative one minus three squared, negative 1, minus, a minus is a 9, negative 9, go to the table, at negative 1, yeah, negative 9, boom, and now you're going to say, uh, that's all we're doing, view an example, plus there's a video, we're just going to plug it in and evaluate, okay, plug it in and evaluate, that's all we're doing. Nothing more than that. So this particular lesson and problem won't take very long. Okay? So plug it in and evaluate. We're just going to stick a negative 3 in, negative 3 in, negative 3 in. Okay? And put in a 1, see what you get. Okay? We're evaluating at an instant in time. Okay? They step up the type of problems. No big deal. Okay? And this one, obviously, we're going to use a calculator because how, what does e to the x look like? What does the sine of x look like? Then we multiply them together. Okay, now, explain why substitution cannot be used to find the limit, to, f to find the limit and find the limit algebraically if it exists. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's do this. Okay. First thing we want to do is we always need to know what is it that we're looking at. So if we take the limit as x approaches negative 5. Now I don't want to give away the answer, so that's why I'm not graphing it. We can graph it, but watch this first. Uh, negative 5 squared plus 11 
times negative 5 plus 30 all over negative 5 squared minus 25. Now, while you wrote that, you may have noticed something. The limit as x approaches negative 5, 5 times 5 is 25, minus 55 plus 30. What is that, 55 minus 55? And 25 minus 25 is 0. You can't divide by 0. Okay? So now, can't be continuous. Something happens at x equals 5, at x equals negative 5, it cannot be continuous. Okay? Because you can't divide by 0. The denominator is zero when the denominator is zero when that so substitution cannot be used to find the limit in the division by zero. The value of both the numerator and the denominator is zero when x is five. That's true. See, this is zero over zero. Substitution can be the value of x is zero, so substitution cannot be used to find the limit defined at zero. So the value of the numerator, so it can't be this one, can't be this one. The value of the denominator is 0 when x is 5. So substitution cannot be used to find the limit since division by 0 is undefined. The value of both the numerator, so substitution cannot be found. So it's A or B. Now, I want to go one step further here. Can you see how the top can be factored to x plus 5, x minus 6? No, 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 x plus. x plus 5, x plus 6. Now the bottom is a perfect square. You see that? x plus 5, x minus 5? Now, that can be gone. Note, remember in pre-calc, x cannot, note, x cannot be equal to negative 5 because that's illegal. So that's a hole. Remember we talked about holes? Okay, so this is a hole. Now we have x plus 6, x minus 5. Now what happens when we say the limit as x approaches negative 5 of x plus 6 over x minus 5? Doesn't this give us negative 5 plus 6 over negative 5 minus 5? We get, what, 1 over negative 10? Hmm. So, different ways to analyze this. Let's see what they tell us to do. Okay, substitution down the limit points. The function is not continuous. Not continuous. We agree. Not continuous. Okay. Okay. The value of both the numerator and denominator is zero. Substitution and find to find the limit is indeterminate. So, the answer is going to be A here. Before trying the limit, factor the numerator and the resulting expression. So we factored it, factor it, factor it, then reevaluate. Okay? So an extra step. So the answer they want is the indeterminate. So we had the right answer. Okay? Now we're going to go through and we're going to recalculate by getting rid of one of the factors and negative one ten, keep my fingers crossed, negative one slash ten. Perfect. Okay. So again, you can see we're fifteen minutes in and we've only done what two real problems. But the concept of instantaneous moments in time, the limit as our variable approaches something. So as we approach 4, we can't have that. 
Now this is a perfect cube, and we'll have to Google perfect cubes, right? Uh, Google perfect cubes. Google perfect cubes. X cubed minus 4 cubed. Here's what X minus A X squared plus 2A plus A squared. Let's see if they tell us in our help. I don't remember my perfect cubes. Okay, when it's plus, plus, minus. Okay, plus, minus. All right. So plus, minus. So this is right. So this is going to be x minus 4 x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay, all right. And it's all divided by 4. So we got to have our perfect cubes, right? The formula for a perfect cube, and that's in, that might be on your, one of your cheat sheets. Uh, perfect cubes. Uh, let's see, perfect cubes, perfect cubes. Uh, we don't want perfect cubes. We want uh, factor perfect cube. All right. So right there. Okay. M minus is plus. Yep. Just got to remember the rule. And, and if you need both, you come both directions. There it is. Okay. A cubed minus B cubed. So A minus B, A squared plus A B. When it's plus, it's plus minus. Okay. All right. So hopefully that was helpful. We factor this. We're going to cancel. Let's just finish this real quick. Cube, cube. So now we're going to get rid of that, get rid of that, leaving us with the limit as x approaches positive 4 of x squared plus 8x plus 16. So 4 squared plus 4 times 8 plus 16. 16 plus 32 plus 16. 32 and 32, 64. I flew through that. Indeterminate. Sixty-four. Fingers crossed. Sure the fact there it kinda of limits. Okay, so now four. This is four X, isn't it? Perfect squares. A B. A, B, 4, 4, 4, I messed up, uh, A, X, A, X, A, 4, X, 4, 4, 16, 32, and 16, 48, See, I didn't remember it either. Yeah. Okay. So we're in 20 minutes. You can see that this is a slow process to work out through all these problems. Have a great week. Only two weeks left. Be proud of your work. Make sure you watch the videos on Blackboard first. Next week, we will investigate the concept of... Derivatives. Have a great middle of June.